Good morning to all. My name is Vila Babu. I'm working as an assistant professor in the department of IT. Today, I'm going to discuss about the computer programming in C. Introduction about the computer programming in C. Before going to start our discussion, so first of all, I ask two questions to every program. So first question is, so what is a language? What is computer language? Generally, we are using the so many languages in day-to-day -day life. So, generally, we are uh, using English language, Hindi language, Telugu language, and Tamil. So many languages are there. So, if you want to use English language, first of all, you need to. If you want to speak in English language, first of all, you have to learn uh, basic uh, rules. You, know, you need to follow the basic rules and instructions. What are the rules and instructions? If you want to speak in English language, first of all, you have to learn alphabets, all alphabets. So combine the all alphabets and make it words. To make it words, to combine the words and to form a sentences. To combine all the sentences to make a paragraph. So that is a uh, rule, that is a format to, to learn the English language. Once you perfect the English, uh, then, then you can speak in English language. In such a way that, so what is that is a language. The language is a nothing but set of instructions to communicate between the one person to another person. For example, here I am uh, communicating with you, so in English language. So if you want to ask any question, you need to communicate with the, the specific language. So if I am teaching the on subject in English language, so if you want to communicate. Uh, if you want to ask any questions related to that subject, you need to communicate with the particular language, English language. So, right, that is a language. So, what is coming to the what is computer language here? What is computer language? Computer language. Computer language is also same. It is also set of instructions to communicate between user and computer, user and computer. So set of instructions to communicate between the user and computer. Oh, so if you know if you know the computer language, what are the computer languages? For example, C, C++, Java, so database, all the languages, the, the, all languages are comes under the computer languages. So how can you, if you know the computer language, but how can you communicate with the system? How can you communicate with the system? What is the need of computer system? Let us see. So for example, one user, one user is there. So he wants to communicate with the computer system. Here computer system. So why I need to communicate with the computer system? Some reason is there, some purpose is there. For example, if I am communicating with my bank, so particular reason is there, so particular person is there. So particular person, purpose is there. So what purpose? If I am communicating with the bank, I am communicating with my bank, just I want to travel one place to another place. So if I am communicating with my mother, I am communicating with my sister, so some reason is there. So something you need to pass that instruction to that person, something you are getting that instructions. So that is the reason to communicate with one person to another. In such a way that, so if you want to communicate with the computer system, so, so what is the need of to communicate with the computer system? For example, I ask one question. So what is a five factor? So everyone can answer this question. What is a five factor? It is a one. 
So my next, suppose my next question is what is 120 factorial? So what is 120 factorial? So no one can tell the answers immediately. So because it is a very big complex operation. So if you want to do very big complex operations, so instead of that, you better to use the computer system. Right? Understand it or not? So in such a way, then instead of instead of uh, instead of doing the big complex operations, you need to better use the computer system. So how can you communicate with the computer system? So can you feel the user? Can you direct communicate with the system? Is it possible? It's not possible. Why? Because computer can understand only binary language. So can a computer can understand only binary. User can understand that. User can understand all languages. But user cannot understand the computer language. Between how can he communicate with the computer system? So through the so you need to learn first what application programs. You need to learn what application, any application programs. First you need to learn the applications. So what are the application programs? You need to learn one basic program. Like example C, C, Java, dot net. Right? First, if you want to communicate with the computer system, first you need to learn one programming language that is that may be C, C, Java, dot net, etc. So if you learn, if you learn C language, if you learn C language, if you are perfect in C language, then only you can write the programs. So you can write one program. For example, so addition of two numbers. Then I am writing addition of two numbers, two numbers. Just I am declaring the A value is 10, B value is 20. C equal to A plus B. Print C value. Just I am writing the just instructions. It is not a C program. It is not a C plus program. Just I am declaring the A value and the B value and add A and B values and print the C value. This like this is called as a like a source code. Source code. You can call it as a source code. So your source code is right. So, by using this source code, can you communicate with directly to the, to the system? So, not at all possible because all these instructions are in the form of a high level language. That is English instruction. These are the all English instructions. Right? This high level language, these English instructions cannot understand by the system because the system only understands binary languages. So, what, if, what we will do? So, in that situation, we need to use one compiler is that compiler is one of the application software application program that is one of the application program what what is the purpose of compiler application so it is doing only translate the source code you translate the source code into the binary code translate the high level instructions into the low level instructions that is a binary language so you need to use the one compiler yeah Compiler. Compiler program. It is available in the market. It is a free source application, open source application. So compiler, what it will do? Compiler will give the instruction to the system. First, compiler is translate the complete source code into the object code. So object code is this is the object code zeros and ones and ones and like this object code like in the form of zeros and ones binary means ones and zeros so compiler will convert the complete source code into the object code this is an object code this is an object code so now system is processing that data and it will, it will produce the Output. Output to the user. This is the actual process to communicate with the system and what is the need of a computer system. Here, what is the need of computer system to do the 
with complex operations. So with any operation we can perform in the system using the computer systems. It is a actual process to communicate with the computer system. So now let us so next our topic is the structure of a C program. Next we will discuss the structure of a C program. So what is the structure of C program? Every programming language having a separate structure. So we need to follow the such structures. So they have given the they have given some rules and regulations. So that that we need to follow that rules. So what is the structure? In that structure of C program, we have a various types of the sections is there. Some sections are mandatory mandatory to include. Some sections are optional. So what are the mandatory to include and what are the optional sections in the structure? So in that structure of the C program, your first section is documentation. Second one is the link section. Third one is declaration section. Fourth one is global declaration section. Fifth one is main function section. Main function section. In that main function section consisting of two parts. The first one is local declaration part. So these are the different types of the sections in the structure of a C program. Coming to the first one is the documentation section. Documentation section. Documentation section means it gives the information about the program. So what type of information? It provides the information about the particular program. So for example, program wants to write the addition of two numbers. First, he mentioned addition of two programs. First title, title of your program, title, next author, author, and date. And date. Title is addition of two members. Example. Addition of two members. So author is some X. So date is 2018. In the documentation section, programmer mentions the details of the program. So which program is which program he is writing. So programmer mentions the details of a particular program in the documentation section. In the documentation section, Having a two different sections. So one is the single line comment, single line comments, and second one is the multiple line comments. So single line comments is what? This is the single line comment. So two forward slashes. Two forward slashes is called the single line comments. So multiple line comments is a forward slash following the followed by the asterisk symbol. This is the multiple line comments. So these comment lines are ignored by the compiler. Compiler will not execute these lines, comment lines. The documentation section will not considered by the compiler. Compiler execution start from the main function itself. So compiler ignored by the these comment lines. This is called as a documentation section. 
it is an optional section but if you include this section it is better to understand the program what is the title of the program what is the author you can understand very easy so this is about a documentation section next coming to the link section so link section is example for for example link section so as include std i wrote dot h link section is also known as a header file section link section is also known as a header file section as include std i wrote dot h is the example for the link section as include phone i wrote dot h is one of the as defines all header files is a function of the link section so what is the purpose of the link section link section is doing the links the predefined functions into your program so it will tell to the compilers so what are the predefined functions we are using in that program there is a link section for example as include stdio.h so stdio means a standard input and output function so what are the input functions and what are the output functions so printf is the input printf is the input and output input function so scanf is the output function. so sorry printf is a output related function scanf is a input function right so stdio dot h so this printf and scanf functions are already predefined in the c library so this we are using the functions predefined functions by using the we are linking to the program by using this header file right if you are taking the if you are writing as include Phone I wrote at it. So this is for the consolidated input and output function. This is consolidated input and output function. If you want to use mathematical calculations, if you want the addition of the numbers, multiplication of the numbers, so power, so power of two. So if you want uh, uh, such type of functions, if you want to use it in the in your program, so you need to uh, define the as math include math dot h. If you want some string calculation functions, string functions, string functions, so you need to write the hash include string dot h file. These are the header files comes under the link section. Right? Thank you.